As you all know, the Norman DD-22 is one of my all-time favorite offshore structure fishing baits. Today I want to go over some techniques and show you exactly why this bait is so unique and works so well. And while we're on that subject, LureNet has some brand new exclusive colors, but I'll get into that later in the video. But did you know that the DD-22 was the first bait to be named after the depth it dives? This actually pioneered deep diving crankbaiting. So now we know that the DD-22 was named after the depth it dives, but actually back in the day when they made it up, they really couldn't get a good grip on how deep the bait dives. The DD-22 on 12 pound fluorocarbon will dive 18 feet on a good cast. You could control the depth of your bait by oversizing the line by going from say 12 pound to 14 or 17. The heavier line size you go offers big line diameter which shallows up the bait. Conversely, you can go the opposite way. You can use a thinner line diameter and get the bait to go deeper. This is very, very important to know for the techniques I'm about to explain to you. So we talked about controlling how deep it dives. Let's talk about the build design and how this bait dives. The DD-22 swims to depth. It's parabolic in the way it gets down to depth. For example, a fat-free shad dives to depth, it's a little more vertical on the dive. And a Norman NXS is a hard, fast diving plug that literally goes straight down to depth. Okay, the other th neat feature about the DD-22 is it has a, it has a smaller kick out. So here's what the kick out is. When the crankbait's diving down to cover, when it hits something, it's deflection characteristic. If it's got a small kick out, it just goes out and comes back to normal. If it gets a wide kick out, it kicks out, goes way up and then corrects itself. DD-22, small kick out. Very, very important. Okay, let's get into some techniques. So the first and obvious, everybody fishes ledges, rock piles, high spots, etc. with the DD-22. So let's say we're co covering a gradual taper on the high spot, it's full of boulders. Because this bait has a short kick out, you could really burn it over those rocks and let it plow into the bottom and it's just gonna bounce left and right, left and right. It's not gonna go real wide on you and get away from you, so you could really burn it in. Sometimes the bass want that insanely fast retrieve to trigger strikes and it really literally just crawls along the bottom. The other thing is when you're working it down on the top of a structural element, there's going to be a break line, a river channel or a break line. When you're fishing on top of it, you feel the bait digging into the bottom. It's doing its job. That's what it's supposed to do. Then it breaks free from the bottom and you're in open water. Wow, here's the neat part about a bait that actually swims down to depth. If those bass are suspending off that break line, because it swims down and doesn't plow down, if the bass are suspending off that break line, this bait literally swims right through them and you get, you get to catch those fish that the hard divers and the, and the fast divers will dive underneath them, you won't catch those bass. So that's the importance of knowing whether the bait swims, dives, or is a fast hard diver. You have to know that. The other place this bait excels is on long, slow tapering points because it'll swim down at the same angle that the point goes down. As you're bringing your retrieve in, it's working the bottom deeper as the point goes deeper. Very important to know because there are times when you don't want a bait dredging all the time. You want it just ticking stuff every now and then. So that's the other reason that this stuff is important. Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite ways to fish this bait, and that's through standing trees, deep standing trees. Because this bait will swim down to depth, you have the ability to literally walk it through the top of those tree branches. There's a couple of tricks when you're doing this. I'll reel it down. As soon as I start to feel it get into the treetops, I slow my retrieve down. I keep it going slow it down and because there's no big kick out to this bait it'll literally bounce from branch to branch and come through the cover now a crazy crazy thing about this bait 
is it has a built-in reverse mechanism. Let's say I'm working it over the branches and it plows in and gets stuck. I don't pull it, don't try to muscle it through the branch, just stop it. The bait will literally back itself up out and then you can continue on your retrieve. Remember that, don't muscle it through the tree. It'll come through, you fish it nice and gingerly. Another trick that I like to employ in the treetops is once I start banging the limbs, sometimes I'll stop reeling and I'll gradually, slowly pull my rod and I'll literally feather it through those branches. Now I want to talk about probably one of the most overlooked crankbait patterns, especially when it comes to deep diving plugs, and that's fishing grass. I'm not talking about fishing frog water. I'm talking about fishing deep grass. I know for a fact that if I use 17 pound fluorocarbon, I can get this DD22 down to right around 11 or 12 feet. Knowing that, okay, I can get on these grass edges and I can parallel the grass edges. If the, if the edge comes down and drops down to 11, 12, I can go to 17 on it. Very important because if I hit a stray piece of grass, because it's not gonna be a straight edge like, like an architect, it's gonna be a little bit meandering. So if I hit a stray piece of grass with a heavier pound test line, I can just snap the rod and blow the bait through the grass and it'll come through the grass. If I plow it into the grass and it buries itself up in, because this bait can back up on you, now we pause it and it'll back up out of the grass, over the grass, and then you can continue on your retreat. Very, very important information. The other thing is, other than grass edges, the thing I like to do look for is very gradual sloping grass edges. So like, let's say I got a grass edge that goes from six to 15 or 18 feet deep, but it's not a hard line. It gradually goes down. This is when I'll put heavy line on this. I'll throw it up to the grass edge and I'll work my weight. I'll take the bait and I'll literally work it down that grass edge. Now, since we're talking about grass lakes, most deep grass lakes where the grass can grow deep they're clear water, which brings me to a couple of brand new colors that I actually designed for this bait. This, this color is called Envy. It's a semi-transparent bait. I use pearls to give, it, to give it a more solid appearance out of the water, but in the water, this bait looks alive and natural. It's semi-transparent, so it blends really well, and it, and it doesn't stand out like a light bulb. The fish love this color in clear water. The other color I did was True Gizzard. This True Gizzard Shad is semi-transparent. It's not as transparent as Envy, but it's semi-transparent. Again, made with a bunch of pearls overlaid on top of each other. This looks exactly like a real bait fish in the water. Another attribute to fishing it in the clean water. There's other colors that are offered in here that also work in clean water, like Evu, Olive blue is another good one. And then the other colors will translate into your stained or dirty water conditions. So that you have the whole range of crankbaits that you could use for all of these techniques. Remember, these new colors are found exclusively at LureNet.com.